Good afternoon. Each of our lives are filled with special moments, and sometimes those special moments spiral on to bigger things. Today, uh, June 26, 2006, was one of those special moments for me. That was the day my first grandchild was born, the first person that we are introducing today. Uh, I can remember the day when she was very young and she wanted to plant watermelon seeds beside our swimming pool, which she did. She planted the seeds and we thought there would be no harm. So all summer long, we had watermelon vines growing around our pool deck. And uh, at the end of the summer and beginning of fall, we were able to harvest the first watermelon. We realize her introduction doesn't afford the time to adequately describe this young lady's many attributes. She's, she's got a positive attitude, very determined, dedicated, and a proven leader. Her, her positive attitude, as well as her commitment to make and be the difference, truly has helped her this past year. Her commitment to her Christian faith is a testament of her character. She walks along beside others on their life journey, spreading love and positivity wherever she goes. She's never afraid to show her emotions, speak what's on her heart, and always lends a helping hand to others. We know that these attributes will not stop here, but will continue to allow opportunities in the years to come, and we will stand beside her throughout all of them. So from her papa, papa, and pappy, we want to introduce you to our granddaughter, Ella Grace Ash, with her retiring address, just one. The sun, warm up the Georgia pie. It's so good to be taking it easy. Why would I ever leave? Cause I know I got some good friends that live down the street. Every single summer, I look forward to fishing trips with my family. But this past year, I just couldn't find the time to go until September 16th. The day started off like it always does. We wake up, we get dressed, we head to the store. There, my dad fills the boat up with gas, and my stepmom gets the snacks and drinks that we need for the day. Everything looks the same as it always is. Then we head to the landing, and there, my dad does all the work because he doesn't trust us with his boat or his truck. So it was all the same, except one aspect was different. Typically, my dad only plans fishing trips for the perfect days. Whenever the sky is clear and the water is like glass. But this day was different. He had planned the trip weeks ahead of time so that my mom, stepdad, and brothers could go with us. So this day, it was rainy, it was choppy, it was cold, and it was foggy. Everything you don't want during a fishing trip. The ride out was rough, and that didn't change once we got to our destination. There, we weren't getting any bites. Everyone was wet and cold, and one of my brothers was seasick. That was a miserable day. We went out with high hopes of catching fish, but were left disappointed, because in my family, you stay offshore until either Dad or Mr. Michael are ready to come back in, or until you catch your limit. And let me tell you, neither of those were close to happening. That was a tough day. We went out with those high hopes but were left disappointed. Now I realize not catching fish and being wet and cold pale in comparison to some of the other struggles life can bring. Whether that looks like not doing as well as you want to in a CD or LDE, having a math lesson that doesn't resonate, or having an unexpected family sickness, the obstacles ahead of us will be abundant. So I encourage you to find the good, because we will always have obstacles, and you get just one life. So what will you do with it? What I did with my life growing up was play softball. It started off at just eight years old with my first travel ball and all-stars team. Then it continued into middle school, then also playing for my school, and then finally in high school whenever I called for Irwin County High School. I loved softball, and I had one plan with it. I was going to go to college to play softball. Throughout the changes of the coaches, teams, and positions, this was the one thing that remained constant. And my plan was going absolutely perfect 
until my freshman year soccer season. Then I was playing travel softball, varsity soccer, and 3v3 soccer, which is where two teams of three play instead of a traditional soccer team. A lot, I know, but I loved every second of it until February 5th. That day, I had all three practices, so I went through my varsity soccer practice with ease. Then I went to my 3v3 soccer practice. There, everything changed. I fell, and everyone heard my knee go pop. I was raised to never cry on a ball field, but this pain was different, and soon tears were rolling down my face. A few days later, we found out that I had a complete tear of my ACL, partial tears of my MCL and LCL. I had a torn meniscus, a fractured tibia, and torn muscle in my knee. At that minute, the reality was for me that sports were never going to be the same. But more importantly, my dream of playing college softball was gone. My dream was so big, but it was shattered in just a couple of seconds. That dream led me in to this organization. It led me into opportunities that I could have never seen existing. One time my ag teacher, Mr. Polk, told me to aim big, to reach for the stars, and if you don't quite make it there, you'll land on the moon. Having the, having the idea of reaching for the big things is so important. But being ready to fail and ready to adapt to it and realize that your life goes on is just as important. Risks are the root of any success story. Jeff Bezos, Vera Wang, and Oprah Winfrey are just a few people who built their business empires on risk. My book, I want to add Sam Ash into it. Sam Ash is the guy that I call my dad. The same guy who was set on keeping that boat out all day, no matter what happened and how many fish we were catching. I admire him for his work ethic, his dedication, and his ideas that he steadily brings to the table. His first business started with just that, an idea. At just 20 years old, when most people would have considered him a kid, he didn't think that way. He applied for a small business administration loan to purchase the human capital, land, and equipment needed to start his first business, Ash Payton Body, in Fitzgerald, Georgia. Then he started his first business, and now at 39 years old, he's owned four businesses and offers to mentor anyone who's helped him. Just his one dream turned into his passion and his way of life. He has been able to support my family throughout this because he just had a dream. How can we, you and me, have a dream and choose to live out our passions so that we can benefit others? During Chapter Officer Leadership Training this past year, Angel and I facilitated a workshop over social media. During this workshop, we asked the FFA members who their favorite social media influencer was. One student raised their hand, and whenever they were called on, they answered, Jesus. This student was Luke Baltzum from the Upson Lee Middle FFA chapter. I was in absolute awe of the boldness that Luke shared with us that day. Following the workshop, he decided to stay and talk to me during his free time. During our conversation, I learned that him and other guys from his chapter have a Bible study every morning whenever they're away, and they asked me to be a part of it. Although I couldn't join them for their usual time, he asked if they had it at breakfast, if I could join them. Of course, I said yes, and the next day at breakfast, Luke, myself, and members from multiple chapters sat at breakfast together. We read the Bible, we discussed it, and then prayed together as one. Luke makes a lot of decisions every day, but just one decision. The decision to share his passions with others, with me, continues to make a tremendous impact. Sharing our passions doesn't have to be something as big as starting a business. It could just be having that one conversation, phone call, or text messages to make the change in someone's life. You remember that fishing trip that I mentioned earlier? The part that I left out was the calm after the storm. 
Although the morning started absolutely terrible, it didn't mean that the afternoon had to be that way. It ended up being a beautiful afternoon with a few fat fish in the ice chest, and I still value this day because I got to spend quality time with my family, and I even caught the biggest fish. What started off as miserable ended up being an awesome day. Sometimes chasing our dreams can include chaos, but the beautiful thing about that chaos is that it's just temporary if you allow it to be. Just like this fishing pole was useless to us at the beginning of the day, it ended up being one of our biggest assets as the day went on. Whenever my soccer injury happened to me, I was completely lost. But now I stand here surrounded by FFA friends that have become family. And I can tell you that what I found whenever I thought I lost everything was this organization. We don't always get to choose what happens to us, but we do get to choose what we do about it. So FFA members, I challenge you to find your joy. I challenge you to chase your dreams, to stride through the struggles and the obstacles with joy so that we can live the life that we're given to the fullest potential. This is your life. Don't miss it because there's just one. Cause man, you never know. If you got a chance, take it. Take it while you got a chance. If you got a dream, chase it. Cause a dream won't chase you back. Ella. Thank you for all the love and laughter you've shared with our team and our members over this year. We've been blessed to see the Lord work through you. There's no one else we would have wanted to embark on this journey on than the girl who plays Cody Johnson on repeat and never says no to a refreshing Diet Coke after a long day of fishing. This year, you have been a guiding light to our over 80,000 members, reminding them to strive for greatness through love and faith. Love always. Cindy, Emma, Macy, Bobby, Ian, Andrew, and Angel. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2023-2024 South Region State Vice President from the Irwin County FFA Chapter, Ella Grace Ash! Yeah.